Welcome to the highlight show for Group 14 of the Ultimate Pool Champions League. Peter Mullaney, Simon Fitzsimmons, Craig Waddingham and Oli Bale will do battle for a place in the second stage of the competition. Let's get straight into our first match then. Craig Waddingham taking on Oli Bale and we join it right at the start of the match. Stephen Jameson joins myself, Simon Webb, on commentary. For the first break-off in the Ultimate Pool Champions League, Group 14. He's going to be dry, which will give first chance to Oli Bale and a chance for us just to run you through what you're looking at tonight just in case you're brand new to the Ultimate Pool Champions League. We're playing English 8-ball tonight which means pot your yellows or your reds then pot the 8-ball and you win the frame. There's four players here tonight. Only one can qualify through as Oli Bale fouls off his first shot. Gets an unkind flick there. Good chance to uh, educate on the rule in case you don't know. It is cue ball in hand anywhere on the table, and that is the penalty. So, Craig can get going. It's still open table as that shot that only just played doesn't count. So, even though he's taken a yellow off the table, Craig still has a chance to be yellows, and he will. All players will play each other tonight in a round robin format. Top of the group after all six matches have been played will qualify through if any players are tied on points. Come the end of the evening, we will have a six red shootout to determine who will qualify. There's only three more spots left in the second stage of the Champions League. Those tickets are running out. And Craig Waddingham here has got his chance to start to make his way towards securing that passage through. Good chance as well on yellows. Great chance on yellows and one that will be really frustrating for Oli. A little bit unlucky because if he gets the thicker contact, he's perfect on the yellow in the right centre and then he can take these out. But for Craig, he's got a great opportunity to start with a nice clearance at the table and set the tone for this match. Something we've seen every single week so far with the Champions League. The first match, the first frame, it's been amazing how many players have really turned up from ball one. I think he can just get past the red, or he has to elevate the cue a little bit. Just has to beat the yellow here. A little flick on the red does the job for him. Absolutely perfect. Yeah, that'll do. There's a little bit of traffic for the eight ball, but not a huge amount. Just has to guard against a bad angle on the last yellow. Doesn't want the reds on the left-hand side together to get into play. All the ones in the middle of the table. That's okay if the eight ball goes bottom left corner, which is what he's looking at now. Just. Only just. Yeah. That will do, though. It's for 1 0 then. For Craig Ward. Never in doubt. He is one of the best potters that we've ever seen on the small table. He is almost, it feels like, the next man up. But as yet, still yet to claim his first ultimate pool pro gold. And I do like to ask him that. I've interviewed him many, many times and Say, so is it ever becoming frustrating with how close you've got without being able to get your hands on one of those trophies? And <laughs> it definitely he, becomes slightly more frustrating every time you ask Every time I ask, absolutely. <laughs> but he, he genuinely, every time he says, no, not at all. You know, he, he believes he's, he's good enough to win and he believes he will win. And it's, he's not getting annoyed by that at all. Maybe getting annoyed by the question, though. <laughs> Tricky layout here. Dry break from early. Came across that break completely. You saw that with the, the spot spinning. But... Hasn't left a particularly kind layout. Well, that red going helps. He just had to pinch the pocket a fraction to get the cue ball to the potting angle. So it's the two reds on the right-hand side. I think he was just looking there to see if he could play the red, the highest of the three in a line there, off the yellow. He'd then want an angle. Well, he decided he couldn't do that, so he's tried to go into it. And that's perfect if he's got a gap. If he doesn't have a gap, he's on nothing. But I think he has. Of 
course he has. Absolutely perfect. Lovely cannon. Lovely control. Yeah, these are the sort of layouts which can be really tricky and really awkward. But when you've got a player like Craig who's so good with his cue ball control, just picks them apart, it's all about taking them in the right order, and all of a sudden, a very tricky, fiddly sort of layout ends up looking very simple. I mean, pots clean as a whistle like that into the middle pocket from a tight angle are always going to help, but, you know, he's left him in... He's left himself dead straight on it, and he'll f he'll feel he's never going to miss that. Yeah, he has picked this finish apart. Very precise, and he picks a lot of routes where he backs his potting. You know, he's not worried about getting particularly close or making balls easy. He's happy to back his potting. But this one's been all about a classy classy pattern and a classy route. Yeah, I mean, it's, that's top quality, really, from Craig Wadding. Really, really good. Craig Wadding and made it 3-0 in the next with a lovely break clearance. Odi Bale breaks off in frame four with it all to do. He's, he's still a top player and he still gets results on the Pro Series. Probably not as consistently, consistently rather, as he'd love, but always a dangerous draw. And he has a ball, so he's got a chance in this fourth frame. Change of break, going to the cut break, gets the eight ball in motion. Nine minutes left on the clock here. It's not all lost here for Oli. He's got to believe. These are all there. Back yourself, make this clearance, and then you're only really asking for one dry break to have the opportunity to get back into this match. The time is there for you. Yep. It has to take out this finish. He'd love to have the angle now to stun across to the yellow on the left-hand side cushion, but he hasn't quite. Yeah, it was just a, a cue ball too straight on that one. If he could have got, got, got across for the one on the side now, gets that one out of the way, then he plays this one and connects up the table. So this is just getting slightly awkward. And not a good angle to go on it now as well. Oh, does that sneak through? I don't, well, it doesn't look like it does. Yeah, he's getting himself down a bit of a mess here. Well, if he leaves it tight to the side rail, can he sneak through that way? Can he maybe play on it off this? Oh, I thought that was perfect for a second. I thought that was going to come off the side cushion, hit the red full in the face. That bump has not helped him. It's amazing because that yellow on the left-hand side doesn't look any sort of problem, really. But he's just not been able to get on it. And he's tried pretty much every shot in this visit. These next three balls are incredibly difficult. Well, well, he has a shot at it, I guess. All the best. You can pot this. It's ultra thin, and the control of the cue ball is incredibly tough. You're almost hoping to hit a gap and some sort of shot on the eight ball, more than really controlling it. Huge disappointment, and that was all on the first shot or two. If either of the first two shots go well, he probably gets out there, and we're already racking the balls up. Yeah, neither one of these players particularly likes to hang around. The yellow hanging in the pocket actually won't bother Craig at all, especially because the eight ball is relatively safe. Could maybe look at playing the combination shot. He may look at a loss of turn shot. It may even sneak past the yellow off the rail. Options are plenty. I quite like the loss of turn shot here. Take the loss of turn, weld the cue ball up to a red, and if Oli gets out of it and moves the eight ball, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. Yeah, because Craig's red at the top of the table isn't particularly kind. Yeah, it stops him having to do a double and... Just held my breath there as I thought he might leave the eight ball on. He's left half the edge of it. Which actually is sort of what he, he doesn't mind because he wants Oli to hit this, really. Yeah, he'd love to see Oli move it. It's just doesn't want him to move it into a pocket. <laughs> well, yeah, quite. 
Can Ole get this track in towards? If he avoids the double kiss, he's got half a chance, maybe middle. Pots the cue ball, pots the red ball, does not pot the eight ball. So Craig Waddingham now will take his chance. Yeah, he was looking at coming three cushions into the right centre there. Incredibly tough shot, of course, but he didn't have anything else. Craig puts that cue ball straight behind his most difficult ball and can now get to work. These three are a little bit awkward, but such as the prowess of what I don't foresee any real issues. He'll naturally be going away from his final red here, but he's got a choice to make. He could he could lay a snooker if he really wanted to, play this the left hand red full in the face and just leave him full ball snookered. But this is where we talk about what he backs himself to make this. I mean, just, just never in doubt, was it? Put all his focus on the pot and forgot the position, though. Another tricky pot. If you say so. Craig Waddingham wins it by four frames to nil. Absolutely flying in his first match. On to our second match of the night. Simon Fitzsimmons taking on Peter Mullaney. The first three frames were won with break clearances. Peter has the break in frame four, 2-1 behind. His old man, he got through the Players' Championship group in fine style. Well, we're seeing an exhibition in power breaking. Are we going to see a golden break? Not quite, and somehow that's dry. Pete Mullaney can have every right to feel pretty aggrieved here because he's hit these just as well as he did his first. Yeah, I'd almost argue he hit that even better. They just didn't seem to explode quite as much. And a chance here for Simon. These yellows are laid out really nicely for him. Just has to be careful with the two at the bottom. Make sure of this first one. Easy with this first one just to get a little bit lazy on it and catch it a hair thick. But none of it from Simon. Just a case of when do you come down for the two at the bottom because they're not an ideal plant. And the one nearest the bottom right-hand corner pocket is not easy to get on and obviously if you can get that one out of the way then the other one becomes a, a much easier ball. Does he play down for the plant early or does he play down for the gap early? Well, could have gone either way there but he's landed on the plant. You can see that's a great angle to see that it's just not as easy as it looks from a main camera. It's good for Simon if he plays this and holds the white, as long as he can see a yellow to right centre, he doesn't have to worry about what he's playing on. Well, he had to pull back to get that, but that's come out really nicely. Good shape it. That was just an awkward angle. He couldn't make his mind up whether to go the other way and come low on the yellows to take a yellow into the left centre or to, to check it up. And he's gone for the check it up shot. But on this table, it's just hard to get as much check on it as you think. And he's left himself awkward on his next ball because of it. I think he can just die this one in off the knuckle. Yeah, just like that. Doesn't affect him too badly. He ends up on the left side of this last yellow. He'll be fine. He's got enough angle to be so. Yeah, okay.
chooses to take that red ball out of all consideration. Goes up the table to hit that gap. And the eight ball waiting. That was never going to be a problem. Simon Fitzsimmons races into a 3-1 lead. Well, not too sure how that's trying. I, <laughs> I think Fitzy was saying something along those lines too. Yeah, came across it the other side this time. Not absolutely squared up, but look at the power still. Still plenty there. And these are the sort of situations that you have to deal with as an ultimate pool professional and get used to dealing with. For Pete Mullaney, you know, he's... He hasn't done anything wrong so far, just one dry break, and he finds himself 3-1 down with five minutes to go, and you have to put everything out of your mind, what's happened so far, and just back yourself to make this clearance and, and do it in good time. And he should make this clearance. These are all there once again. I mean, both these guys are breaking with so much power. The splits have been great for them. And the connections between these are absolutely ideal. They really are. Hold the hold the cue ball here, straight in for the corner, and you, you just a pro level player just can't really go wrong from there. I don't want to make it sound like it's too easy, but when they do connect as well as these, the quality of player that we have. Yeah, you do just never expect to miss. And for me, I think Peter does definitely look more comfortable out there than when we last saw him. I think that's for sure. Completely agree. Very good. 3-2 stays in touch, and he has the next break. Just something to keep an eye on. Oh, worst break of the night Not for him. Oh, he's unlucky. I'll tell you what. I was about to say he's unlucky. Then all of a sudden he was very lucky because he was about to get a golden duck. Watch this eight ball. Cue ball straight in. That eight ball was going in too until it got diverted away. Oh, that Very first, nearly match over. Yeah, that first nudge was sending it right in the heart of the pocket. Yeah, sounds strange to, fit, to say it, but very fortunate in a way. Yeah, only in a way. Only in a way, because <laughs> he's still highly likely to lose the match off that break. Because Simon can just work his way through these. These all go. Only mileage, really, in this clearance is with three to the right centre. How does he deal with them? And that is a really nice way of dealing with them. Taking one of them to the bottom left corner. My question was going to be, does the left hand one of the three go to the right centre? Because that helps a lot, but I don't think it does. Beautiful. He would love to have got straight on that previous shot, so he didn't have to play the cannon. But once he got the cannon, he had to make sure he didn't knock the red on top of the yellow. A delightful little cannon. He's still going to play, have to play half a shot here, right at the bottom. He just needs to make sure those yellows don't get in the way. So he needs to get across to the sort of the left-hand side of them more than likely. Without going too far to the left-hand side to make it awkward then to make the pot and control the cue ball. Just a trace aside and ball in hand perfect. Some standard being set tonight. Our two favourites are living up to the billing. Simon Fitzsimmons will meet Craig Waddingham next. As the two winners from round one will collide. Pete Mullaney, though, will fight for his Champions League survival. Pete will stay out in the arena to take on Ole Bale in match number three. Both players losing their opening game and in desperate need of a win. Peter won two of the first three frames and has the break in frame four. Oh, this time though his break goes all wrong. The power was there. The connection was there. But he's just got his line wrong. 
Straight into the top corner pocket. He knew straight away. You don't Cardinal have, Sin. You don't have to be far off to get into those top pockets like that. He hit that so well. Yeah, this could be one of the quickest frames I've ever seen, actually. Because yellows were just sitting there. The quickest ever reverse clearance is 27 seconds. And Oli could have beaten that here if he wanted to. He's not going to be far off and he's taking his time. Yeah. That is the definition of a freebie in this game. It doesn't get any easier. Brody Bale ties things up. It's 2-2. Two -two. Back to the cut break then, Froley. He's chopped and changed tonight. No joy. A bit more to work out here for Peter. Red and yellow together, just below the eight ball. And then the eight ball itself, if you're taking reds. You could go into it now, but no guarantees to knock that red into a good position going into it now. And he misses it altogether anyway. Went into it with a lot of pace because he knew there was no guarantee. If you go into that with a control pace, you're knocking the red towards yellows and not on. But of course, flying into it at that pace, the spin doesn't take. So it's a lot lower down the table than you expect it to be. He finally gets into the reds, but at what cost? Is he snookered? I think so. And he's left these yellows absolutely sitting pretty. Oh, doesn't quite get the contact on the red. Not that it would have made a huge difference anyway. Everything happens so quickly out there at 15 seconds a shot. It's just really hard to sort of analyze as a player and work out what's best. But that red was so tricky to work out. You could make a case that were yellows the better color set. That, but then did he have a good starter and a good pattern with the yellows? So hard to say and, and work out at 15 seconds a shot. But the one problem ball he had with reds was just never going to be easy. And it's cost him this frame. Or it should cost him this frame. Oh, I think it will. Holy at the minute, telling the big dog to sit. And stay. Loose one, that previous one from Oli, but good recovery. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, Oli's not in the business of throwing Pete Mullaney any bones. 3-2. More dog puns available. <laughs> You're trying. If, if you'd like. <laughs> oh, he's gone for the cut break because he wants to get the eight ball in motion. Oh, I just feel like that's a slight error of judgment. And look, it, it's very easy to sit on the sidelines and, and second guess and, and all the rest of it. But Pete's break has been absolutely massive tonight. And... I, he's made one bad break where he's gone in off. I feel like he's deserted his, his best weapon. But in the end, it's not going to matter because Oli's missed the shot. And yeah, Pete gets the chance. He does, and it's a really good one now. I mean, he's chasing the eight ball there, but I mean, I'm a big fan of the cut break. I know a lot of some of the legends of the game aren't, but I, I'm a huge fan of the cut break. Horses for courses, but when you break as well as Pete does, I find it hard to sort of see yeah. him go to the cut break because it is such a powerful weapon for him. 
key shot. If he can just connect this to the next ball, everything should be very simple and he should be able to fly quickly. Yeah, decided not to do too much, just drop it in the gap. So now it's this one. I thought he might do more on that last one and almost get in the mix, get in the middle of those four reds to make it really simple. Because now you see he's getting away from him a little bit. That's actually landed okay though. Make the pot on and off the cushion and you're all good here. Yeah, Plum. 90 seconds to go. Holy Bale breaking next. Well, Pete's not rushing. He's going slow. He's trying to give Oli less time. I can make the case for him, though, that the draw's not really great. Yes, it keeps him in, but it's such long odds. He needs the time for a reverse clearance. That's the best he's hit it tonight. Deserves a ball. He's not going to get one. Pete Mullaney out the traps. 50 seconds to go and win it. I don't think he's going to try. I mean, the draw just doesn't help him. You've got to, you've got to give it every chance here, Pete. Well, he's got a shot here to maybe move the yellow out. Oh, and he gets that, but he doesn't make the pot. Now then, Oli, have you got something special for us? He is a very quick player, but this would be very special. And in the end, he gave himself too much to do with his first shot. He has opened up yellows, and oh, with a little bit more than 17 seconds, you'd maybe give Pete a very good chance at this. In the end, I think he'll he'll run out. Yeah, he wouldn't have needed much longer. So it ends with balls flying around the table, but it ends with a handshake. The bullet and the big dog cannot be separated. Three apiece, both will be left wondering what if. Match number four is always the key match of the night. Simon Fitzsimmons taking on Craig Waddingham. We join it right at the start of the match. Craig has the break. Two power players in the eight ball game. Both won their opening match tonight. So meets in the second round of matches. Winner of this one will go a pretty long way towards booking a path through to the next stage of this competition. The group would be at their mercy. Both were flawless in their first matches as well. Something has to give here. Great chance for Craig to start with another clearance from the break though, these are all there. The only one that's half half an issue, and I really stress half an issue, is the one on the break line. Just make sure the yellows don't get into way, in the way, depending on what angle he leaves when he gets onto it, which highly likely to be his last ball as well. Might make more sense to play for it into top left hand corner than top right because it's more open. It's a good example of Craig never afraid to leave himself distance for a pot. Doesn't worry about getting too close, just gives himself a shot. It's very good, had to be precise there. If he left the cue ball short with the eight ball there, then he's going into the yellows at the top. And it could just become a little bit of a problem or he would have been cannon into the yellow he was next to. So just topping it through to get straight. Look nothing, but it made the finish. It's just flawless, isn't it? Absolutely flawless. Craig made it 2-0 with a reverse clearance. Simon responded with a reverse clearance of his own and now has the break 2-1 behind. Oh, golden duck. Wow. 
cue ball and eight ball potted simultaneously. And out comes Daffy for Simon Fitzsimmons. Just, Brutal. Yeah, so tough. You make that great clearance in the previous frame. It really was a great clearance as well. Get yourself back on serve. It's your break and disaster. There is an element, a very small element, of user error. Oh, yeah. Because I mean, the cue ball went straight in. Yeah. But even then, you weren't even asking Craig to make the reverse clearance. You know, it's just straight away. I guess it gives him more minutes. Yeah, if Craig got a dry break, that is. Yeah, he needed, just needed help. He's got zero help. Yeah. Zero. Zero help. And no major problems here. This is just about the only shot that can go wrong for Craig. Right along the top cushion, just get past the break line and everything goes. I guess eight ball only really goes bottom left corner or right centre, but he should have a couple of good options to get onto it in either of those two pockets. Yeah, this could well probably should well be all she wrote for Seifitz in this match. And it's tough. He's come to the table once. He's cleared up. And then a couple of bad breaks where he's gone straight and off have ended up costing him pretty, well, very dearly. Well, that's the thing, isn't it, for Simon? You know, the two breaks he's hit in this match have actually been poor breaks in terms of control, straight in. And that's the difference between winning and losing. Or I should say between losing and having a chance to win. Yeah. For Craig Waddingham, still absolutely faultless. You've not even come close to hearing the beeps for the 15 second shot clock, Craig Waddingham gets it done inside of 13 and a half minutes. And he sails on through to the final round of matches. And he's going along very, very nicely. Simon Fitzsimmons will stay out in the arena to take on Ole Bale. But ultimate match of the Ultimate Pool Champions League Group 14. The Bullets, Ole Bale, back on the bays. And he's got Simon Fitzsimmons to contend with. Ole is now out. Having seen Craig Waddingham get that win against Cy Fitz in the last match. That is that. Broly. <laughs> I think uh, <laughs> someone's getting a rather important call in the, uh, <laughs> in the crowd. Early rattles on undeterred. Not affecting the bullet, though. No, absolutely not. But yeah, Simon Fitzsimmons is now the only man who can stop Craig Waddingham from qualifying or at least replace him from qualifying. The man who can actually stop him is up against him in the next match. Pete Mullaney needs to beat him if Cy Fitzsimmons has any chance of qualifying tonight. Cy Fitz has got a win here against Ole, and he needs to run a favour. He needs Pete Mullaney to pull out a win against Greg Waddingham. Any other combination of results, and it's Waddingham who is sailing through to the second stage. As Ole Bale rattles off the first frame of the match. Flew in those. Ole made it 2-0 before Simon responded to get one back and has the break in frame four. Was slightly worried for a while here. The cue ball was going to be very unfortunately kicked in off, but... Stays on the table. Not an easy finish left. You see there, right that moment, Simon thinks he's in off. But not a good layout. If you go reds, how are you dealing with the red nearest the eight ball?
could pop the one to top right, come on and off the cushion and almost hit the gap of the red and the eight ball. Delicate cannon that way. You could screw into it now. I mean, it does go to the top right hand corner. It's just hard to get that positional shot right. Might have an angle where he can come across the table and almost put the cue ball in between the two reds. That's what he's tried to do and turns away in disgust straight away. Knew he was a good, good distance short there. Yeah, he almost feels like he's rowing against the tide a little bit here, Cy so Fitz. He's a little bit unlucky there. It was a great pot. And any thicker or thinner on that kiss or miss the kiss altogether, and he's on this red. Nearly a fantastic shot in the end. It puts him in a world of trouble. As we talk about, it's not just getting out of snookers. It's also doing something with it. And I don't really see how you can do anything with it. Nor could Simon, in the end, run out of time and just had to hit and hope. Tough to take. So Oli's thinking yellow off the red. That opens up the centre pocket for the other yellow. Just watch where the red goes. Could do some damage further down. Oh, he plays it off the eight ball, which I quite like, actually. I was asking, where's the red going to go? The nice way of playing it off the eight ball was the eight ball was going straight into yellow and wasn't going to move anywhere. The downside of it is if the eight ball doesn't pass the red to the center pocket. If the eight ball doesn't pass the red to the center pocket, you could leave that delicate drop into the right center. And that connects to the eight ball top left. But Oli's going another way. He's going to play the yellow off the red just to open up the pocket. Yeah, I like that. It's a nice route. Yeah, really nice. May have just overrun that previous positional shot by one revolution. He wanted to be able to get right behind the next one. And you can see there, just off straight the other way would have been better. But good shot. Very nicely worked from the bullets. Very good. Or oh, Willie. Only Bale scratches straight in off the centre pocket. Well, Simon's going to have to fly here. Time is ticking. Five minutes left. Needs to win the next three frames. <laughs> I feel like we've been here before. Yeah. <laughs> Layout's good. And the reason I'm not saying great is because the eight ball's so far away from the rest of your work. Whatever ball you leave last to get onto that eight ball, the cue ball is traveling. And it's not as easy to get good on that eight ball as you might think. Greg Waddingham keeping a watchful eye. World's biggest early bail fan right now. Oh, that's a not. You feel for Simon Fitzsimmons a little bit. He's he's a bit jumpy on the shot. He wasn't completely happy. Yeah, he wanted to be straighter on that one so he could just top through to the red that only goes bottom left. It didn't go bottom right. He tried really to tried to force it in. You see yeah. where the cue ball's left. It's it's horrible. There is enough room to land on that red to the bottom left-hand corner. Just had to get a good angle to get onto it. Goal, but that one stays up. 
hold on to those hats. Oh, that was tight. Not sure that went. Referee just checking to see if either of the two balls are on the cushion. Because you have to hit a cushion after contact. And if a ball's on the cushion, it doesn't necessarily mean, or it doesn't, isn't classed as hitting that cushion if it is touching the cushion. That's not what I'd call particularly safe from Oli. Yeah, that's a strange shot for me. It's almost as if he's saying, oh, you have a go at these. But actually, once Simon Fitzsimmons makes that first shot, he'd absolutely fancy taking these out. But having said that, that's not the best shot he's ever played. Little recovery one will do him nicely. Little doubles, you got enough on it. There's your answer. Frustration building for Simon because he had no time at the start of the frame. And now, even if he gets back to the table, he's killed the clock. But the chance of getting back to the table isn't great. He's feeling pretty good about himself right now. Job done for Craig Waddingham, you feel? Yeah, and we've spoken to a lot of players who've been in Craig's situation where they they know they're playing in the last match and they, you know, they know if someone does them a favour in the match before, then they don't have to worry. And make no mistake, they all want to not have to worry about that last match. It's an uncomfortable pressure, different than you expect. So this eight ball for Oli Bell to beat Simon Fitzsimmons and to simultaneously put Craig Waddingham through. He has done just that. Bale wins and Craig Waddingham's work is done as well. He's got one more match to play and we may well see an exhibition side to Craig Wad as he takes on Peter Mullaney. Fairly sure knowing Craig Wad, he'll want to finish 100% and in style. Back in your chair, Peter. Down boy, the big dog, kept in his kennel with a last ball rolling for Craig Waddingham. You keep trying with them. <laughs> <laughs> it was last ball rolling as well. An absolute teaser, both of the players <laughs> have a little glance at each other. If the red passes the yellow to right centre, these reds are these reds are gone. If not, there's a, a tiny little bit of work in them. Only tiny minds for a player of Craig's ability. He did see Craig. He wanted to deal with the reds at the top of the table first. And that may have been a, an effort from Craig just to flick that red on. Can't tell whether the red goes to the right centre or not. Just the way he played that previous shot makes me think he was trying to play a delicate little nudge on it. This one's not quite going to plan for Wad. Can't quite get hold of this cue ball. A few finishes he took out in the first match were pinpoint and very classy. This one can't quite get hold of. Just wonder if there will be that little drop off. Oh, he's going to foul. Went for the kick shot and 
That's the first mistake Craig Williams made all night long. Well, it's not going to cost him because his work's already done. But it's it will, a, it's it will a get chalked as a mistake. Yeah, it will. It's already down as a as an error. But there's a, a case here actually for saying there's more for Peter Mullaney to play for in this match. And you know, we're often talking about how tough it can be playing these matches when you've already been knocked out and yes there's positions and ranking points to play for Peter's got a chance to to finish second in this group with a win here if he gets the win he'd have a win and a draw as would Ole Bale and they'd six red shoot out it out for second place in the group more ranking points available whereas Craig is finishing first whatever happens Yeah, that he is. I just think more than anything else, though, for Peter, every moment he can take in and experience in this environment on this stage is valuable as he continues his journey as an ultimate ball pro. Tries to work his way up the game. Came into tonight talking down his chances, and he'll be doing that in future tournaments, but... We've seen plenty from him tonight to show what he can do. It's not like he's been blown off the table. He did everything he could in the first match against Simon. Yeah, it looked more than at home, I thought. Yeah. He was actually really impressed. And then got his draw in the second match. Probably made a mistake or two more, but, you know, still got his draw. Slightly loose there. Would love to be on the, the yellow he can't see. Can he see enough of the yellow below the eight ball to pot it? Now, the fact that he's looking at potting angles on the last yellow suggests he can. No, he couldn't. So it was looking at a safety option behind that yellow. So a big disappointment for Peter. And I think he's left a pot on for Craig. just doesn't miss. Yeah. It's just never a doubt in my mind that he could miss that pot. He's, he is right up, where, up there with the best potter on tour. There's so much more to being a pool player than, than just potting balls. It sounds a bit trite, but it, it is true. There's so much to the game. Best players in the world have a little bit of everything. But as a singular attribute, I think if we asked a decent sample size of professional players who they would most like to pot a ball to save their life, Craig Waddingham would be. A reverse clearance from Craig Waddingham in the next made it 2-0, and he has the break in frame three. Compared to the last one, this should be fairly routine for him. Next two shots are key. Going in the centre pocket with a perfect angle, track up the table. Very nice. His cue ball bar uh, really the first frame in this match, which had a couple of questionable moments. But his cue ball's been on a string tonight. It's been so impressive. He's picked some great patterns and, as you say, put the cue ball to go with it. Oh, we'll get to speak to Craig and after this match. We'll ask him how much he's been playing of late. Cause I know... Historically, he's not the world's biggest practiser. He does rely a lot on his natural ability and all the rest of it, but he's looked as sharp tonight as, as I've seen him really in, in a while. 
He's, he's always going to look very good. He's he's too good not to. His potting's too good, but... I mean, yeah, I was trying to think, w when does he not look sharp, though, yeah. But he's, he's looked really on it. Yeah, I've been very impressed tonight. I mean, this even this out, just super stuff. Brilliant. Mm, this is world-class stuff. Mark Fleming, all capable. Pete Mullaney, if this is to be his final break of the night, starts or well, ends how he began, really, by right, mullering that front ball. It was a powerful break, but not the greatest of splits. Yellow Unless he can get to the yellow to the bottom left, in which case that one isn't a problem, and it's just the one on the right-hand side, which you could double or look for the cannon to break it out. Can you just drop the one in near as the pocket? Probably. It's just whether you can play it with any pace to get the cue ball back out. It's all very, very tight down there. And that's Unlucky. not helped. Unlucky. Yeah, you tried to get that one out early, which is always what you want to do. But unfortunately, knocked into a position where it now doesn't double. This time, it's lovely. But not left him a good angle. Hard to pot this yellow and get on the next ball. He's trying to see if he can just top it through, whether he can then get to the one by the pocket, but not much room there. Just flicks the left-hand side as the, of the red as we look, which just about gets him where he wants to be. Oh, after going so well. They're doing all the hard work. That was always going to be the problem with that one, getting pace to get it out. You had to pop that one off as far off the jaw as you could to avoid hitting the red on the way through. And on that pace, it's rejected. to play a little breakout shot. Wonder whether he would. He could have dropped that one in, used the one to the bottom left, get on the one into the middle, drop it in on the acute angle, leave the one down the cushion last. But that little cannon's worked out well. Always very difficult. Those ones into the right centre or either centre from an acute angle. We say that every week and players make it look like they're nothing. <laughs> yeah, they've got a really annoying habit of doing that. Well, it's been pretty flawless tonight from Craig Waddingham. Absolutely one of the best players in the world. And tonight he has played like it. Pretty unstoppable tonight. Not much Pete Mullaney or indeed any of the other players could do. Craig Waddingham in relentless form. A brilliant performance from Craig Waddingham sees him move into the second stage of the competition. This whole night is available on Ultimate Pool TV to watch back. And this is the lineup that we have for next week's group. Carl Sutton, Scott Gillespie, Jake McCartney, and Mark Fleming is your lineup for Group 15 of the Ultimate Pool Champions League.